This is a game changer. It truly is. Uh, as we push forward, we've never been in such a position. I am super excited uh, about where we can be. Uh, to, you know, to kind of put it in perspective, we certainly, we've been working on federal provider status for 20 years, my entire career at this point. And to think about the possibility that we as a state can make this change and for us to be able to expand services. Uh, if you uh, think about access to primary care providers, how many of you, be honest with me, how many of you have a primary care provider? How many, good, mm -hmm. excellent. How many of you tried to get a primary care provider but can't get in? That's the other half of you, right? So we have lack of access, right? So just think if we expand the number of pharmacist clinicians that are out there that can serve patients, can manage chronic diseases, remembering 80% of chronic disease management is what? Medication. Medication management, right? Who does that best? We do, right? We are the best trained healthcare provider to manage medication. So who should be doing that but us? So think about that and think about access to care. Think about reducing emergency room visits, hospitalizations, rehospitalizations, which are commonly related to uncontrolled chronic diseases and those pile of medications they have at home and how we can support and practice to the top of our license, then allowing all of our other interprofessional healthcare team members to practice to the top of their license. That's where we need to be. That's the future, and the future's now. So, are you excited to make those calls? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Today, pretty much what we're gonna do is we're talking about House Bill 42. We'll kind of explain what exactly that is for those of you that don't know. Um, and today we're gonna do like a call bank. So we're all gonna call our representatives um, and just let them know why we think this is important um, and why we think that they should vote yes because it is now on the House floor. So House Bill 42 is also known as the Pharmaceutical Service Reimbursement Parity. Um, so pretty much it requires managed care, Medicaid and commercial insurances to reimburse pharmacists and pharmacist clinicians um, at the same rate as other providers are getting reimbursed for these same clinical services. So this is really important to how we're gonna practice, not only now, but in the future. Um, we have a lot of medically underserved counties in New Mexico. Um, we all know that pharmacists bridge the healthcare gap. Um, so we should be reimbursed properly for the clinical services that we provide. Um, so right now, it is located in the House floor. So it has passed both committees. Um, and the sponsor, her name is Deborah Armstrong. So she's the sponsor from the House of Representatives. Um, so like I said, it's passed the Health and Human Services Committee and it just passed the House State Government Election and Indian Affairs Committee on Monday. Um, so it's headed to the House floor. We don't have an exact date yet, um, but this is a good time to start calling them, putting the word out. Um, and we've been doing that for a while. So. Thank you all again for being here to, to work on this. So a lot of questions that we got, I know we got it a lot at Legislative Day, what happens next? So if it passes on the House floor, it will get sent over to the Senate um, and it will have to go through the same kind of process on that side as well. Um, so it will have to go through the same two committee process and then it will go to the Senate floor for a vote. Um, and then the governor can sign it into law at that point. So it'll be kind of two identical bills, one on each side, and then um, we'll go from there. So, um, and this is just a general, how does a bill become a law? So it's kind of, we kind of went over this. Um, so right now we are like, seven-ish, so it's placed on the calendar for a floor vote, so it'll, it's on the floor in the House of Representatives. So then from there, we're gonna move on to, hope, hopefully it passes, and then it'll go to the Senate side um, for votes on that side as well. Um, so I can walk you guys through this. In case you haven't done this or you didn't um, get to go to the pre-legislative day meeting, this website is really helpful. You can keep track of the legislation. You can find your legislator. Um, so you go to this link, go up here to legislators, 
find my legislator. And right now we're focused on the House of Representatives because that's where this bill is currently. Um, and then the easiest way to do this is search by address. So just make sure the political body is correct. Make sure it's House of Representatives. Um, and then you can go ahead and put in your address. And then you hit search. And so this actually is my representative. I met her on legislative day. Her name is Diane Hotchman Vihill. Um, so if you click on her name, it'll tell you like all of her information. I talked to her quite a bit over email already. Um, so she actually was on the committee that our bill just went through. So I did speak to her before it went through that. Um, she is really supportive of pharmacists. So this is just a really good way to kind of see them, get their information, um, and know how to contact them. Um, so I do suggest that you all do this, and especially if you're from, like maybe you don't wanna do your Albuquerque representative because someone else has already done it. If you're from a rural part of New Mexico um, or your family is from a rural part of New Mexico, have them call their representatives too because they are gonna be different based on the different parts of the state. So I do encourage you guys to get your family in on this as well friends, um, whoever you can, because like I said, this is really important. Like this is a big deal. Um, not many states have this. Um, so this would be really huge for how we can go on practicing pharmacy in the state of New Mexico. Um, so that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today. Um, so we have a sample call script that was given to us. Um, pretty much you're just gonna call them. You'll most likely be speaking to like their secretary. You probably won't speak to them directly. Um, but calls, they, they take all these kinds of things into consideration. It's weighted a little bit more than an email because it takes more effort. Like you have to be here, dot, pick up your phone, physically speak to someone rather than just typing an email. Um, so they do take all of these kinds of things into account. So I love our turnout today. Um, so I do appreciate it that you guys all decided to come and do this. If you wanna use this speech, you can, or you can just say, um, like this says like a personal story, like why do you think that this bill needs to be passed? Like tell them exactly what you're thinking. Like they want to hear from you or else they wouldn't be representatives. Like they are representing us as New Mexicans. So um, we're gonna leave this up for when we do the call bank. Um, but just make sure you establish yourself as a constituent. So I would say, my name is Jessica Severin. I'm a constituent of Representative Hotchman V. Hill, District 15, um, and I'm calling on behalf of HB 42. And I would suggest also saying the name because sometimes they may not know. Um, and establish yourself as a student. Like I'm a second year student pharmacist at the University of New Mexico. This is why this is important. Please consider voting yes. And that's really all you have to do. Um, it's really simple. If you need help, we'll be here to help. Um, but what questions do we have about this process? Any? I'm an optimist, and I really think this is our best time to get this bill passed. We're, you know, we have a governor, a house, and a senate that are all of the same party that all back this bill. So right now is the best time to get this bill passed. Um, for me, uh, this bill is a patient access bill, first and foremost, and that's what I try to emphasize to our, our uh, constituents. We are extenders of care. Um, you know, this is really going to be the future of pharmacy where the provider might, uh, you know, a physician may start a hypertension medication, and when they come next month to get it filled, the pharmacist is going to be the one checking their blood pressure, titrating their med, giving their vaccines. Um, and when we take on and accept this responsibility for the members of our community, it not only extends care through us, it allows other providers to see more patients. So it extends everyone's care. And it's important to show that this is gonna be access um, for patients. 31 of 34 counties uh, have a lack of primary care access. And those are the counties we need to hit. So how many of you are, were born outside the metro area? Okay, so I don't want you to just call the representative of the county you're in now. I want you to call the representative of the county you were born in and say, I was born and raised in this county. I'm currently studying to be a pharmacist and this will increase access in my area. That is how we're gonna get this bill passed. Um, if you need any resources, I'm just gonna show you guys. NMSHP is sponsoring a resource center. Um, so if you have any questions, you need more information, nmshp.org. Um, it's right on our homepage. We, you can check the bill status. We're currently in temporary uh, calendar status. So what that means is they said 
this bill needs to be heard and it usually will be heard within the next 24 to 48 hours. So it could be heard as early as tomorrow. Um, Dale Tinker thinks it's sometime between tomorrow and Friday um, and a late onset Saturday to be heard. So we really need to push uh, calling our members now. If you need information about finding your legislator, we have the link, we have the sample calling script. We also have a copy of the bill, we have talking points. So if you need to understand uh, some of the issues we've addressed today, they're there. Um, Dr. Dodd um, and Dr. Anderson's uh, podcast is up here. The op-ed they wrote is up here. Any resource you need to be get better educated on the bill is here. If something's not there, email me personally and we'll get it up within the same day, okay? So everything you need is here um, and you guys can really have a big impact. We've already made a lot of headway and I wanna empower you. Um, I know it doesn't always feel like we can accomplish something, but we have an opportunity here uh, to do something big. We were the first state to get uh, the pharmacist clinician or, or a collaborative practice agreement like that in place. If this bill gets in place, we'll essentially be provider status and again, we'll be the first state in the nation to do so. So I really um, implore you guys to be passionate, um, take ownership of this and really advocate for this bill. Thank you guys.